Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. This is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. <clears throat> Tonight, we're going to talk about personality types and chameleons, and then we're going to move right into the fun. Ten ways you know you're dating a psychopath. <laughs> Here's how all this started. I, um, you know, uh, when I do, when I played some videos that were done by women talking about women's issues and kind of agreeing with us guys, a lot of you were saying, ah, she's just a chameleon. And of course, chameleons being able to mimic their surroundings. So I decided maybe I'll do a video about chameleons. And so I started looking it up and uh, come to find out they may be bipolar. They may have BPD, the bipolar disorder, or uh, they talked a lot about them having the INFJ or ENFJ personality tests. If you didn't see my last video, I just did a video taking the personality test to make sure that I'm not a chameleon. I am not, um, but it's a fun video, and if you go watch that one, I'll, you can get redirected to the test. Take it yourself. I'd love to know what you bachelors are as far as personality type. So then I read, and like here's uh, like how much a, of a chameleon. Oh, let me record this so you can see what I'm talking about. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Here's how much of a chameleon you can be based on your personality type, and they say INFJs can definitely be, chame be chameleons, and ENFJs are definitely chameleons. And... So, but I noticed that, that chameleon and personality types and BPD were all linked very tightly together. And a lot of them led to stories like this, 10 signs you're dating a psychopath. And what it is, I think, is that chameleons do not have a very strong sense of person or sense of self. And so they mimic whoever they're around because they don't know who they are. And they can be very quick to change um, so, and they, there, I read a story, I, I was going to do it for video, but I decided not to, but I read a story about where a woman was dating. She was married to one guy, shocker, dating another guy, shocker, um, where her husband was a very c clean cut lawyer, professional type. And she was also dating the bad boy. And when she, she was uh, with her husband, she acted all prim and proper. And then she, when she was in the bad boy or dating the bad boy, she was a bad girl and she mimicked them. So that, and those kind of all kept pointing to crazy people. <laughs> so, so I said, you know what? Let's just make today's video 10 signs you're dating a crazy person and what to expect. Because reading through here, I think all of us have dated this person at one point or another. They say uh, psychopaths aren't all serial enders. <laughs> they could be your con conniving coworker who somehow seems to get away with everything, or maybe they're just a totally normal guy who served you coffee this morning. They look like you and me, but there's one big difference. They don't have a conscience. They can harm others with absolutely no sense of remorse or guilt. To any onlooker, they will slip through life unnoticed. They're likable, they're friendly and charming, but not too over the top. But for those who are unfortunate enough to become close to them, a nightmare will begin to unfold. What starts as a fairy tale slowly transforms into a uncomprehensible mess of mind games and chaos. And here's some signs you're dating one. And I'll tell you, I have met some, and I didn't realize it at the time, like most people don't, but, but they're able to, and this does have something to do, it's kind of similar with, with uh, narcissism as well, but they're able to become who you want them to become. In other words, if I'm into motorcycles and martial arts and CrossFit, which are three things I'm kind of into, all of a sudden, it's, wow, I've never tried CrossFit. Let me go to the gym. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, can I get a, a ride on the back of your motorcycle? I love motorcycles. And, oh, I've always, can you teach me some self-defense moves? Because that would be great to protect myself. And, wow, you're such an interesting and deep and amazing person. And to you, it seems like, oh, wow, I've met somebody that likes who I am, that likes the things that I do. Her hobbies are kind of my hobby. She doesn't have a lot of drilled-in must-do hobbies of her own. It's because she's, and I say she, but it could be anybody. He, she, doesn't matter. They don't have a lot of hobbies on their own because they have no interests of their own. They just grift and, and change depending on who they latch on to. So all of a sudden you're thinking, I've got a great person. And then, then everything starts to fall apart. And so they reel you in with idealization, love bombing, and flattery. 
One way you know your partner's a crazy person, a psychopath, is how the relationship starts. When you first meet them, things move extremely fast. They tell you how much they have in common with you, how perfect you are for them. Like a chameleon, they mirror your hopes, dreams, and insecurities to form an immediate bond of trust and excitement. They constantly uh, initiate communication and seem to be fascinated with you on every level. If you have a Facebook page, they might plaster it with songs, compliments, poems, and inside jokes. Um, you know, when I, I ended up dating a person like this for, I'd say about nine months, you don't see it at first. It's just everything feels natural. Uh, they just feel like they're really into you. It depends how, how you know, deep they are into it. But if they're just, you know, for the most part, you think, yeah, they're just really into me. It's kind of a good feeling. It's a compliment. It makes me feel good. And then things start to fall apart. Three months, six months in, nine months in. They prey on your emotions with pity, plays, and sympathy stories. And this is something we hear often today. An abundance of sob stories that can sometimes be a sign you're dating a uh, dating one. I don't want to keep saying that name that word over and over again because YouTube can be weird about their all algorithms. The thing is, you'll quickly find a soft spot in your heart for them. They often seem cute and innocent at first. Forget your television idea of the arrogant narcissist with a flashy car. They'll probably mention their uh, bad ex who's still in love with them or did them wrong or the, the exes were always the bad guys, not the person that broke up with them or not the, pers not the person you're talking to. They say, the, that, the, they say that all they've ever wanted is someone, uh, some peace and quiet. They hate drama and yet you'll soon come to notice there's more drama surrounding them than anyone you've ever known. Um, yeah, usually it's, I just want a good guy. I just want a good girl. I just want someone that's normal. Um, all my relate past relationships have been really crazy, and it was always the other person's fault. Look, I've I've made some bad decisions in relationships. I'm so, uh, sure some of you guys have as well. I've ended some relationships. They've ended some relationships. Things don't work out. But when somebody says it's never me, that usually means it's always them. It's just like they say if if you're in a room of a hundred people and there's no crazy person you're the crazy person. They involve you in their own versions of love triangles. Once you're hooked, the triangulation sets in. They surround themselves with former lovers, potential mates. Um, I'll also throw in old uh, boyfriends that are now just friends. This includes people that the, they may have previously denounced and declared you superior to. This makes you feel confused and creates the perception that the uh, this person is in high demand at all times. When you're dating a psycho, confusion and power games are the norm. The girl that I dated for about nine months, she said this ex of hers treated her really poorly and then come to find out uh, six months, seven months into the relationship, oh, they're still texting. They're still talking. Oh, I've forgiven him. Everything's fine. But at the time when the, the reel and bait the sucking me into the relationship first initially happened, he was the worst person in the world. And I was so much better. Only, you know, a lot of these things later on, you come to realize, oh man, did I get suckered in? But once you've gone through this, I think, now you see those warning flags much clearer and you probably won't get taken for a second time. That's the good news about this, at least, that if you pay attention to what did happen, it won't happen to you again going forward. They constantly rewrite reality or gaslighting you. Dating them often involves being subjected to a lot of manipulation. They blatantly deny their own manipulative behavior and ignore evidence when confronted by it. They become dismissive and critical if you attempt to disprove their fabrications with facts. Instead of them actually addressing their inappropriate behavior, somehow it always becomes your fault for being sensitive, crazy, um, snooping around, being nosy, being jealous. There's all tons of excuses that they'll use. Uh, they, they condition you to believe that the problem isn't the, the bad things uh, that they're doing itself, but instead your reactions to their bad actions. And for more on this, they have a link. Again, this happened to me in that same relationship. I have one relationship that did this to me, and it's actually the last longish term relationship I was in. This is one of the ones that made me really say, should I ever date again? Because it was that bad near the end of it. And some of you guys with your, your awful stories I've read in the comments, you know you were dating this or married to this or had kids with this person. I know it because I read it in your stories. And a lot of you know it now too, because looking back, you're like, holy cow, 
how did I not see this coming? It was a train attached to a a, 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 a ton of dynamite, and I, I never saw it. They accuse you of feeling emotions that they are intentionally provoking. They call you jealous after blatantly flirting with an ex, often done over social networking for the entire world to see. They call you needy after intentionally ignoring you for days on end. They use your manufactured reactions to garner sympathy from other targets, trying to prove how hysterical you've become. You probably once considered yourself to be an exceptionally easygoing person, but dating them will temporarily turn that notion upside down. Yep. It's funny because because when I started reading through this, I was like, oh yeah, this was the last relationship I had. Uh, you've noticed them pathologically lying and making excuses. Another clear cue that your partner might be a, a, a psych, a psycho, is constantly lying. There's always an excuse for everything, even things that don't require excusing. They make up lies faster than you can question them. They constantly blame others. It's never their fault. They spend more time rationalizing their behavior than proving it. Even when caught in a lie, they express no remorse or embarrassment. Oftentimes, it almost seems as if they wanted you to catch them. I will add on to this. Or when you do catch them and they try to lie their way out of it and they can't, they can't work their way out of it, they will bring up an old argument or another argument that you've had or something that you've done and they will counterattack trying to put it back on you. And when you try to bring it back to the issue, they will either shut you down, they will say now that you are changing the subject or not dealing with their counter argument, or they'll go into an emotional outburst. It happens, and I unfortunately know this firsthand. They provoke jealousy and rivalries while maintaining their cover of innocence. Your partner once directed all of their attention to you, which makes it especially confusing when they begin to withdraw and focus on other people. They do things that constantly make you doubt your place in their heart. If they're active on social media, they'll bait previously denounced exes with old songs, photos, and inside jokes. They attend, uh, they attend to the competition's activity and ignore yours. Yep. So it's a... Um, the the expression that I've heard a lot of times that's a good one is it's the catch or it's the the real catch I got that backwards bait <laughs> bait catch and real so what they'll do is they'll put something very tempting that you know oh I've I've never met somebody like you or oh our intimacy is the best I've ever had or um, you're so interesting and exciting and then they throw that out to you and you like that attention as a normal human being would what you don't realize is it's poisoned and you bite onto it and they reel you in with compliments and saying nice things about you and making you feel good about yourself and then they have you well once they have you they're bored see the the catch that pulling in that fish that that activity of trying to get that person in is exciting and then once they have it and it's there and they just go oh my fish uh, i'm kind of bored with it so what do they do they leave it or they throw it away and that person that gets thrown away so casually or gets discarded so easily is completely confused. I don't understand what just happened to me. Everything was going well, and now I think she's talking to other dudes behind my back. The guy that she said was awful, she's, she, I see her leave on likes on Facebook if you're still on that stuff. Or she's just, she doesn't return texts, or if she does, they're one string uh, or just one sentence, and you feel like you're losing this person. Well, they've done that to you on purpose. They, because in the meantime, they're reeling or messing with somebody else doing the same thing. And so you want naturally to go back to the place where you first felt that initial excitement, that first bet bait, that first catch where uh, you were being showered with love and attention. And this can also mean you're a little bit unhealthy too. Um, not nearly as much as the person doing it to you, but it means that you're not a strong enough character to say, no more, I'm not putting up with this. I know that was my problem when it happened to me is I wasn't in the best the best place in my life and I didn't know what was going on. Now, obviously, I do. So then they'll let you drift away and you make these attempts to try to get back, try to get back, try to back, get back, and then they'll start reeling you in again, only to discard you. And for them, this is fun. It's entertainment. They're, they don't have normal uh, a normal conscious or guilty conscious or they don't feel like you normally would doing this to somebody else, which is regret. 
They withhold attention to undermine your self-esteem. I think that's what I was just talking about. After once showering you with nonstop attention and admiration, they suddenly seem to completely be bored by you. They will treat you with silence and become very annoyed that you're interested in continuing the passionate relationship that they created. You begin to feel like a chore to them. And that's kind of like what I was saying before. You're no longer exciting. You're no longer interesting. They've caught you. They've got you. Now they need to move on to the next challenge because, again, they don't have a logical, normal, empathic response to what they're doing to other people. They exhibit selfishness and crippling thirst for attention. When you're in a relationship with, with a psychopath, they drain the energy from you and consume your entire life. They demand for Their demand for adoration is insatiable. You thought you were the only one who could make them happy, but now you feel that anyone with a beating pulse could, pulse could fill the role. However, the truth is, no one can fill the void of their soul. And this is true. This is why you don't attempt to try. You can mention maybe getting therapy for them, but until the person with the damage looks to repair the damage, you can never help them. And they will just chew through person after person after person, always trying to fill themselves with other people's happiness and other people's lives. And it's a bottomless pit. They can never fill themselves. And ultimately, when you move on, the devastation that they can give you in your life is horrible. It will make you doubt dating, people, your own sanity sometimes. But when you're through all of it and you realized what happened and read some psychology books, I read a dozen of them to try to figure out and understand how did this happen? How did I, how did I fall for it? Why didn't I see the red flags? Um, when, you, when you finally work your way through it, when you come out on the other side, you should probably never be fooled by this type of person again. But while you're in that mire after this, it can mess with you hard. The good news is when you're done with all this and you move on with your life and you have to get away from this person because they will forever try to draw you back in. They, that's just what they do. It might be six months. It might be three months. It might be a week. It might be 11 years. They're always going back and trying to, to feed this hunger of theirs. Once you've moved on, the good news is you will recover. You'll be happy and you will feel okay. The downside for them is until they get help, this will be the rest of their lives. They will never find happiness. So the end result is you can actually feel sorry for the person that did that to you. Now, you may also hate them. <laughs> That's okay too. But the good news is you can recover from this. You don't recognize your own feelings. You know you're dating a, a psycho when the, your natural love and compassion have transformed into overwhelming pan panic and anxiety. You apologize and cry more than you ever have in your life. You better, fellas, better not be crying. <laughs> but I did apologize. You barely sleep and you wake up every morning feeling anxious and unhinged. You have no idea what happened to your old, relaxed, fun, easygoing self. After dating them or even just a brief romantic encounter with one, you will feel insane, exhausted, drained, shocked, and empty. You tear apart your entire life, spending money, ending friendships, and search for some sort of reason behind it all. Not all of you necessarily will go that deep, but when you've latched on and, and fallen for somebody like this and they yank away and become so cold to you, it can be really devastating and it can occupy a lot of your thoughts and time. And uh, I, I'm sure most of, some of you have been through this. Uh, what to do when you realize you're dating them? Um, run, run. Um, I'll, I'll read what they say because this might actually be good advice. I haven't read this. These relationships leave long-lasting damage with feelings and doubts that you'll, you'll never be good enough. Relationships with them are like drowning in a black hole because no matter how much they hurt you, it's, it'll still be your fault or at least feel like it's your fault. They ignore your best qualities and provoke your insecurities until your entire personality becomes unrecognizable. I didn't get dragged down that far. I got out while I still had some sanity left, thank goodness. Fortunately, there's always hope for healing. After you leave them, your first step is to employ the no contact rule, what I was just talking about, which means absolutely no texts, no emails, no social media, nothing. Block them. You have to ghost them 100%. If, if they find a way to message you, do not reply. Do not reply with F off. Do not reply with I hate you. Give them nothing, zero. Like 
Make them think that their text or their message just fell into a void and you never saw it. You have to make them forget you even exist. That's the only way you can do it. It'll feel impossible at first, but easier with time, you'll slowly find your sanity returns and the chaos dissipates. Eventually, this experience will become an incredible opportunity to discover self-respect and make healthy boundaries that will serve you for the rest of your life. And I think this is a great article. I agree with it wholeheartedly um, because at the end of this, a lot of you guys are here now saying, you know what, I'm going to love myself. No one's going to be able to, to take me down into that dark place again. No one's going to be able to sucker me or fool me like that again. Uh, I, and now I, I know a lot of the red flags and what I'm looking out for. Now, when somebody tries to, to for example, love bomb me, I mean, if somebody says, hey, you know what, I re I'm really glad we get to talk or um, I, I'd, I'd like to go out on a date and then you go out on a date and you have some things in common and things proceed at a normal pace. That's not what they talk about with love bombing. Love bombing is very intense. It's moving to get physical, very intense. It's making it very enticing, very exciting. Um, and you are their new world, which when you're a lonely guy or girl, when you're a lonely person, this can be very exciting because you think you finally found, finally found somebody that can become a part of your life and fill the void that you feel like you may have been missing. The problem is they will fill it and then when they, they pull themselves out of it, they'll take three quarters of you with it and it becomes a very unhealthy chase to try to scoop it all back together and stuff it back in and make yourself feel whole again and you can't, they're already gone. They just come in and they revel in the attention and they also, and this is what makes it so dangerous, they also revel in the destruction. They love knowing that they have done this to you and that they have totally screwed up your world. And many times they either find it a challenge or they find it amusing that they can do this to other people. So, um, you know, guys, be aware of this. If you've gone through this, I'm sure you know it. Keep an eye out for it. Be aware of it. And if you're in this situation, you have to, you got to go because it's just going to get worse and there is no fixing it. There is nothing you can do to improve this situation. And, and ultimately, the person that's doing this to everybody, they're the ones that are going to lose. That's the best you can take out of this is that you will recover and they won't. Guys, if you'd like to support my work, links are below. If you have, thank you very much. The best way you can support me is like, comment, share, subscribe, and check out my um, older videos. You can meet me over on uh, betterbachelor.locals.com. I've got my forums over there. You can read for free. You can, you can support me for $5 a month. And of course, then you can post on the forums as well. I'll leave it there, guys. This is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker. And remember, once you've been through this once, that's enough for anybody for a lifetime. Pay attention, be smart, don't let it happen again. And if you see these things happening, run for the hills. Mm -hmm.